Good evening. Hope everyone's doing all right. I finally got a chance to clean myself up and look civilized. Went in and they hacked off a enough hair, although the length is still there, but they hacked off enough hair to uh, to make a small wig or a large wig. I'm not really sure, but anyway, uh, I am making this week's video for a little bit different reasons than I normally do, which is sort of to let people in on what's going on in my life. I know I talked last night, or the last video that I posted, which ended up going on YouTube because uh, it was too long, although I think I'm going to start doing that now just because then I get to actually see how many people look at my videos, which I think is great. So nice to have people say, well, you make all these video blogs and these posts, and it's like, wait, what? You mean you actually watch them? Holy crap, people are watching me! Ah! No, it's not bad. I can calm down. This is a good thing. Now, to answer the question of people who say, like, you should stop doing this and go off and do other things that are more important. Well, first, this is my connection to the world. I need to get out more. We know this. We can agree on this. We as a people understand the vital importance in getting your head out of your keister and going outside. True. But on another level, on a more intellectual level, I want people to know my ideas and I want to reach an audience. Call it the writer in me. Call it the orator. Call it whatever. There's a part of me that thinks there's something valuable in myself that I have to offer the world. Now, perhaps the video length is not what it should be. Perhaps you should be short to the point. Instead of rambling on for ages and ages and ages past. So, we can work on that. I can work on that. The audience, on the other hand, they're going to have to start watching my videos on YouTube. I'm sorry. I actually want to know if people watch this. And, heck, if it's like five views, it means that five people actually watch my video. Of course, on Facebook, that seems less but, than it does on YouTube. But, hey, if five of my friends or ten people watch this, it's a lot. If you think about it, perspective. So, that said, that's set aside. What am I going to talk about? Well, first, I've been going to these meetings. Every Monday night at Refuge, which if anybody doesn't know, it's part of Imago Day Community Church, downtown Portland. It's a fun, safe place to be. If you've got any challenges going on in your life, or just you need a place that's safe. We come, we meet, we talk. Once a month, we have a potluck, and it's just a gathering place. For those people who need a gathering place, that's safe. And it's a safe environment where people talk about their troubles. They share, we improve, we work together. It's not therapy, it's not anything like that. It's just, it's just a safe place. And for a lot of us, there's not a lot of safe places that we feel we have. Now, maybe there are a lot of safe places, we just don't know about them. Thusly coming to my second point. Part of this exploratory summer lecture series on relationships has also opened up another perspective for myself. One that tonight I realized. And it's been many things going on, but here's to my point. It's about education and it's about understanding. People, I think, I feel, throughout their lives are very dynamic and change. A moment can change you, can change your paradigm structure in ways that you are never the same. You are never that same person after that moment. But I think people underestimate the number of times that happens in people's lives. I also think that people don't recognize the importance of those encounters. So, for example, when 
when you're talking about learning, so let's let's take an, a, a less you, like overwhelming example. We talk about math, for example, because that's a subject that I think a lot of people have troubles in, and it's a subject that, at the same time, is not. I mean, not for those people who have really have really bad math anxiety, but just I think for most people. Math is a subject that is not your personal life. It's not something I'm going to judge you on. Although some people do, and I'm sorry. But here's the thing. If we take math as, a, as an example of life, okay? We say that when you're learning mathematics, a good teacher, someone who really understands the fundamental structure of education and language and how one communicates, recognizes that each person is coming from a unique context. There are certain things they know, and there are certain things they don't know. And in order to improve, one must understand, you know, so to help a student, you have to understand the context the student is coming from. Now, I've been looking more at the Finnish education system. This is something they do a lot better than we do. I mean, I was almost on the floor laughing because I swear it's coming straight out of Neil Postman and out of general semantics, and even out of my great uncle who taught education. It's just, you know, you have to know what the student knows. So you send them up to the board and you have them do stuff and you have them, but you don't do it judgmentally. You don't say, you're wrong and you're a failure. No, 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 no. You're positive about it. You, you need to know what they know so you can grow with them. You can grow them so they can grow themselves. But the problem is, in math, if you if you're missing something, if there's a connection there, if there's a paradigm that, that isn't connecting, something's going on. Something destructive, something maybe not destructive, but just is missing. And in order for that person ever to fit, keep, to, to get that idea, to really get it, they need that thing. And there could be a lot of those things. And you could go and teach the class and do all these things. This is what I've discovered from tutoring and also from myself learning and understanding how learning works is that you could have this one piece and it could be six years back and it could just be a perspective. And without that thing, it doesn't make sense. And it, and it doesn't fit. And the problem is, is when you learn math or learn life in a really screwed up way, disorganized, out of place, you know, you have a good teacher, a bad teacher, whatever, your perspective is going to be fucked up, as my life is. Now let's take life now. Okay, we're going to judge a person, because let's just say people do that. I'm not saying they do, although I think they do. No sarcasm intended, but just hear me out. People tend to go through life skewed. Sometimes we don't get all the life lessons we could need. Sometimes we're better at certain relationships, or better at helping other people with their relationships, than we are dealing with our own relationships. Sometimes our relationships were destructive. Sometimes friends keep telling us we're doing things that are destructive to them or whatnot, and we don't understand. We're like, I don't understand. But, you know, and they think they understand, but it's like the math problem again. It's, I think I understand what you're coming, where you're coming from. I think I understand. I see that I'm hurting you. I think I understand. I'm trying to solve the problem, but yet I keep coming up with the wrong answer. What is going on here? Obviously something is amiss. Something has gone awry in life's little process. Which is not little to say, but being as it is, in our lives we have a complex perspective. There are many paradigms, there are many things that go on in the world. The more you have, Usually the better off you are, at least as I've seen. The, the more experience you have, the more uh, 
uh, varied the experience is, the more people you've met of a variety of experiences, especially those who really analyze the world. Those experiences help you to grow. They've helped me to grow. But I think that when we look at other people, there is a grave tendency amongst people to judge, to say, you're not doing this well. You're failing. I keep coming back and telling you this. We've been on this discussion for six months or a year ago. You're not changing. And I understand that part of that is a necessary confrontation. You know, you, you have to address the fact the issue has not progressed, but that is the point where you as a person, if you're in this helping, you know, you want to help the person, which I think all good relationships, as I'm learning, are. You have to be willing to help the person change. You have to want to help them better themselves. If you will have a strong friendship, a strong relationship. But that doesn't mean you plow them over. It doesn't mean you manipulate them. It doesn't mean you control them. It just means that you want to improve and they want to improve. And you help each other. And it's a two-way avenue. Now, this is where I think this key idea of understanding the dynamics of human beings, the changes we go through, the missing pieces of the puzzles, of the perspectives and paradigms, that if you don't have something, you're never going to get it. You're never going to break out of this problem. And people get angry and frustrated because you're not changing. Maybe you're hurting them. Maybe you keep doing these things, yet they're stuck in this mindset of you aren't changing. Instead of stepping back and looking from a broader perspective and saying, hold it. Why aren't you changing? Now, maybe you're not changing because you really don't want to change. And that's a whole separate issue. Maybe it's something they can help you with. Maybe it's something you have, they can address to you, and maybe it's something you don't recognize. Maybe you don't realize you don't really want to change. Sometimes that conversation is very valuable. But at other times, maybe it's not that you don't want to change. Maybe it's that you don't have what it is necessary to change. Maybe you don't have a perspective. Maybe you don't have... Uh, a certain set of values. Maybe there's something, some idea, some construct that is missing, some experience you didn't have as a child or growing up. And without that, without that healthy thing, you can't function. You can't change your perspective. And you're going to keep doing things that are wrong or that are hurtful to others because you yourself lack that or lack this necessary thing to put everything into perspective. Now for me, one of those things was boundaries. For me, the concept, the construct of a boundary is so foreign to me. It is a new idea. And when I try to explain this to people, they have the attitude, well, one of the people I know, one of my friends, I think, I feel frustration because they have seemingly found it difficult to accept that I'm coming to this like a newborn child. It is such a new construct. It is constantly changing my paradigms here. I'm constantly seeing them change as I try to experience things that I've never dealt with before. I mean, I realize that people have this attitude that, oh, well, you know, obviously you, you must have experienced this at some point in your life. Well, not necessarily. There are those of us in the world who have been living under a rock. You know, there are musicians that I have truly never heard, styles of music I have truly never heard. So, you know, there are, there are experiences, things like 
boundaries that because of my life never had them. I didn't get boundaries as a kid. If I had any, they were violated. So, you know, the idea of a healthy space, what is considered appropriate, what is considered unappropriate, things like this, they don't exist. My dad is a kid. He'd get mad, he'd get this far away from my face and scream at me. He'd insult me, he'd berate me, you know, and then I had kids in school who violated my boundaries and so on and so forth. So for me, this truly is a new idea. It's something that's like learning to paint for the first time or learning to draw or learning to drive a car or learning to do anything new takes a great deal of time. If you're expecting me and angry and you're responding violently in, in, a, in a passive or in a, in a literary or however the way is, if you're attacking me as I'm learning to do this, you're not helping me. You're harming me. I understand you have sensitivities yourself. There are boundaries that when people cross, it truly harms you. I understand. I respect that. But when people are learning these things for the first time, they're going to make mistakes. You know, I've crossed boundaries that I didn't even know existed. You know, I, I, I'm living life according to how I've learned. You know, I'm a smart person. I've developed tactics to survive in my home and in my life. Now, maybe some of those, I likely, likely those, are not going to help me in the total of life. But in my little world, they serve me very well. So please do not disrespect me because I had to develop things to survive. Again, I as a person am going to learn here. I'm learning, I'm going to grow, but in the moment, in the moment, I may do things to other people unintentionally that are bothersome, that are harmful, that are many things. And if I do those to you, please understand that I do not do them truly out of a heinous and out of a hurtful space. I am learning now to step back, to take time and distance and do things now that are better at dealing with these things. And maybe some of that confrontation was good, but now that I know these things, now is the time for you to stop reassess and understand that what I'm going through now is a process of change. It is very difficult change. And it is, is hard for me as is anything I've done in my life. And as friends, as human beings, I expect that my friends will give me the leeway and the respect to do that. And if that is not the case, it is going to harm my process, and I will have to take space in turn. So most of my friends, I would say nearly all of my friends, give me the necessary space, the necessary uh, boundaries and respective boundaries to do that. I admit I don't always do that because I, as I said, don't really understand the concept. It's new to me. And, you know, this is not something you learn overnight. You don't learn calculus in a sitting. You know, you, you don't. This is, boundaries are the same thing as advanced mathematics and science or anything else. It's a learning process. And it's not something that a person instantaneously picks up. And if you expect that, you're really fooling yourself here. Because this is something that is complex and it's something that I myself am going to struggle with. And I suspect others struggle with this and don't even realize how complex these issues are. So, I'm going to leave you with the thought of understanding how when we view people, when we look at others, and we try to understand how people react in the world, there are times that people miss things. They do not get the thing that is necessary for them to succeed. If they don't have that, they're not going to be able to complete the task or do what is necessary. 
And oftentimes, if a person continues to fail, continues to mess up, if, if it's not going according to what we would like, in the long term, you need to step back yourself and reassess. Now, maybe you do have to take a step back, really a step back, and distance yourself from the person. But at the same time, you have to be extremely careful that you aren't judging the person. You aren't being hurtful to them in turn. You know, just distancing yourself, being loving, and saying, I have to take this step now because of the situation, that's respectful. But saying, screw you, I'm cutting our relationship off, that's not that is not helpful to anybody because it's also destructive to yourself. So just, just bear with me here. And I hope that this helps out some people who I suspect themselves have issues going on. But I wish everyone the best of luck. And thanks again. Now let's see if I can turn off this without crashing my computer. Peace.